Whether you have pain in your back or joints, surgery may not be the answer. Instead of the dangers involved in cutting out tissue, consider healing and rejuvenating the area with stem cells, platelet-rich plasma, or prolotherapy. The treatments that are available to professional athletes are now available for you. Watch the videos at jointrehab.com or call the Darrow Wellness Institute at 800-300-9300. 800-300-9300. That's 800-300-9300. Hello there, Dr. Grove. This is Dr. Mark Darrow on a show called Living Pain-Free. We're in the studio live. We'd love to have you call in and ask us questions about your musculoskeletal pain, things like neck pain, back pain, meniscal tears in the knee, labral tears in the hip. Uh, we, je- we basically inject the entire body, toes, feet, um, backs, necks, and deal with arthritis. You name it, anything that hurts. In terms of the musculoskeletal system, we can probably help you. We have to examine you. That's a big issue. People will often send in um, emails saying, here's a copy of my MRI. What do you think? And the joke about it that we laugh about, really, is everyone thinks those images are going to decide whether you have pain. And the studies show that the images have nothing to do with your pain. So be careful that you don't have a surgery based on an image. Dr. Grove uses ultrasound, which is live, looking inside the body, and it's something what we call dynamic. You can move the body around and actually see what's going on. A lot of times MRIs miss things, and a lot of times MRIs are overly sensitive and show things that aren't even really there. So we like to get MRIs. We use them for ancillary information, but never to decide a diagnosis. Anything to say about that, Dr. Grove? Yeah, MRIs can be useful, especially when you're looking on the inside of bones. So that's really the big limitation of using ultrasound is those ultrasound waves can't penetrate through tissue that's as dense as bone. So I can just see the surface of the bone, certainly, but nothing on the inside of the bone. But for soft tissue, ultrasound today is 100% the way to go. It is much higher definition than MRI. I get a much better uh, you know, three-dimensional sense of what that tissue looks like. I can move my probe around. I can move the actual patient around around and see if something has maybe a little bit of extra stretchiness or laxity. I can find terrors that you can't see in MRI. Uh, in addition, the, the big reason we like it is because I can guide my needle. So I can't do that with MRI. MRI, you're in a, you know, a tube, you know, sitting still. Uh, with ultrasound, this is actually how I see my needle the whole way through, making sure I'm not hitting any sort of uh, you know, nerves or, uh, or vessels, and making sure I'm delivering uh, regenerative medicine, right, platelets and stem cells, uh, as specifically as I can. Uh, another big plus for that is the injections don't hurt as bad. I had a couple of patients this week, they were so shocked uh, at how little discomfort they had uh, during their procedure uh, when they had uh, injections previously. And one lady, she was terrified. She had such a poor experience last time uh, for a knee injection uh, by another I hope uh, that was provider. another doctor yeah, by, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by a different provider, yeah. Um, and it sounds like to not use ultrasound, it sounds like they were really dinging up her quadricep tendon uh, which is very, very painful. I've never experienced that before. Um, but with ultrasound, again, we can miss those structures, deliver these cells right on target, minimize how much tissue that we're you know, hitting on the way in. Uh, so it's more specific, plus it gives you a little bit uh, less pain during the actual procedure itself. Small needles we can use. And what about uh, fluoroscopy injections? Yeah, fluoro is another really common modality. Again, it's just it's older technology, right? So fluoro is going to be using uh, radiating waves or x-rays. Uh, to see tissue, but really what you're looking at is the bones. You don't see soft tissue very well. So uh, fluoro, again, for something like a joint injection to me is completely unnecessary. Uh, People who are using fluoro just, in my honest opinion, don't have the training in ultrasound. I have no idea why you'd still do that. Uh, You're exposing patients unnecessarily to radiating energy. Um, and, and again, it's just, it's more expensive too, right? If you want a floral guided injection. Uh, so it's just, you know, what's the an, an, you know, analogy you like to use, Doc? It's like a cannonball had a mosquito. Like, why are we still yeah. doing Why are we still why doing, are we doing it? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why we do a lot of things in medicine. And it stumps me every day to have uh, patients come in that are being treated in an old fashioned way. I mean, to me, medicine's always about do no harm. That's, you know, that's the, the key word in the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. And um, I just see that plummeting people with medications and surgery is not the way to do that. And I want to get back to this question that came in. Oh, yeah. Um, It said, my mom doesn't have cartilage in her left hip joint. I said, I doubt it. 
because uh, if she's moving around, she's got cartilage. This is the old bone-on-bone scenario that's not really bone-on-bone. It might look like that on an x-ray, but when we do an exam and we see these people move around, we know there is cartilage there. And uh, she said she has surgery scheduled, but I don't want to do it. She's eating a delicious, strict anti-inflammatory diet. Sounds kind of nice, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Nice. Nutritional supplements and physical therapy. She's doing better. However, she is not pain-free. I would like to know if she would be a good patient for the platelet-rich plasma therapy or stem cells. She doesn't live in the United States, so she has to come into the States for treatment. So the bottom line on this is we have people come in from other states and other countries all the time, and we typically like them to stay for a little bit of time so that we can do more than one treatment if possible, if it's something that needs that. And um, it it obviously is going to be... Um, a lot easier to spend time here rather than fly back and forth. And um, unfortunately, insurance doesn't pay for regenerative medicine. And our costs are a lot less than most providers who have experience that we do. Yeah, just to interrupt you there, Doc. So again, yes, these are cash-based treatments, but we keep our prices so low that it actually is more cost-effective for you to fly back and forth and still save a lot of money. So even though, yes, you know, we'd rather you know bulk together these these uh, these treatments. Um, again, compared, I just had a, a guy come in uh, two days ago. He got quoted; it was like thirty thousand dollars for a knee injection, right? Now, I don't know about you, Doc. I've never treated somebody that many times. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, I'm treating the whole body multiple times for thirty thousand dollars. Like that's that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, I don't get it either. Um, I don't know why the prices are so high. Not because, using ultrasound, by the way, too. I don't yeah, know if I mentioned that. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, just yeah. like this is so. Yeah, I had so I had dinosaur. someone come up from. Uh, they went to another country. I won't mention which it is. They had a nurse do a knee injection. And not guided by ultrasound, they paid 30000 bucks, and came to me later and had zero results from that treatment out of the country. I mean, it's very seductive to think you're getting, platelet, uh, sorry, getting stem cells and injected IV intravenous, which in my humble opinion does very, very little except stops a little bit of inflammation for a few days. Everybody I know that's done that said it felt great for a while. It's good for rheumatological conditions, if you're having a terrible flare of uh, rheumatoid arthritis or something like that, it'll quiet it down for a few days and then it comes back. So I've never found anybody, I have to fess up, I had this done, I left uh, the country twice before anybody knew about stem cells and I had embryological stem cells injected IV, I got zero results from it, zero. It was a procedure that cost $30,000 each time I had it done twice. I didn't pay anything for it, so don't get crazy about it. It was a friend of mine who was the doctor who did this, and he had me come down there because he wanted my referrals of patients. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to send you anybody. It didn't do anything for me. And he says, well, you're just not a good candidate. You made up something. <laughs> well, again, it's, t- just, it's, it's a really cool idea. Uh, I'm, I'm big is. on research. I'm big on reading about this stuff. It's very exciting, and we have all these proposed mechanisms of how this stuff works. So it's like, okay, well, it works if we locally inject this. So what if we just put it, you know, uh, all over the, the entire body through, the, through like an IV? And again, in theory, it sounds really cool, but it's just it's expensive, and we just don't see the results yet. Um, again, maybe something comes out, and there's a new delivery Hey, if there's uh, something way. coming out that's going to work, we're going to be doing yeah, it. Yeah, we're all now. about it. It's just, yeah, people always ask us, well, hey, can we just, you know, put some in an IV and do it here? It's like, well, listen, we just we don't think it's worth the, the trouble because it's much more uh, effective when you locally inject it in all those painful areas. You know, we did have a woman who went to thailand she lives locally here oh, yeah. with us and i think she spent nineteen thousand mm-hmm. and had the iv treatments and um i don't think she got very good success with that at all no. and then do you remember who she is by the way uh i do and how's she doing now do you know yeah doing much better yep uh again i'm always curious when people come to us after they've had injections right and again don't forget we are physicians we do proper intake do proper history and physical and so when I see on their medical history, hey, I've had multiple treatments, you know, done before, or like within the last year, I'm always scratching my head. I'm like, so then why are you, you know, coming to see us? What's going on? And there's a lot of reasons why something could not be effective for somebody. So that's definitely one of them. Um, again, if you're not getting ultrasound uh, guided injections, who knows where that needle is going? Um, Do you remember how many times you had to treat her to get her to feel better? By the way, I want to say it was like maybe two. Okay, yeah, I believe. I think so. Yeah. Um, <coughs> 
but it's just it's one of those things that if we're getting better results than other people, I, I just I gotta <laughs> chalk it up to listen. If you're not aiming where you're putting that needle, uh, you know you're really guessing where you're placing those cells. You know, to be fair, uh, getting injections other than where we're doing them from another practitioner may be helpful. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not putting anybody down, and sometimes it takes that extra injection to take it over the hump to get enough tissue growth so a patient feels better. So we never know how many treatments it'll take. I'm going to go to um, asking for a phone number, putting it out again so we can get some callers. <coughs> you want to give that out, Dr. Grove? I'll yeah. get a frog in my throat. Yeah, I, all good, all good. Yeah, give us a call live, guys. You can talk to us live on the air here in the studio. Our number to call is 866-870-5752. Again, you can use a fake name. Make sure you're being safe. Pulling over if you're driving. Uh, one more time, the phone number here, 866-870-5752. If you want to check us out doing these procedures, uh, do some more reading about the research behind regenerative medicine, check out our website. That's at www.jointrehab.com. That's www.jointrehab.com. Spot on every page. Shoot us an email. We'll get back to you. Um, if you want to get a free consult with our staff, not with us, but with our staff, give us a call at 800-300-9300. Again, free consult over the phone with our staff, not with us, is 800-300-9300. We'll get you a copy of Dr. Darrell's book, Stem Cell and Platelet Therapy, Regenerate, Don't Operate. Great place to start if you're trying to explore this area and see if regenerative medicine could be a good fit for you. All right, so I got a question that just came in. It says, I have terrible pain on my right shoulder. It's called rotator cuff tear. Hope Dr. Grove and Dr. Darrow can fix my problem. What do you think? Yeah, rotator cuff. Let's talk a little anatomy. So you've got your arm bone, right, where the shoulder meets uh, <coughs> the, the, the other uh, part of the shoulder here. It's a ball and a cup, okay? So over that joint, you've got a uh, set of tendons, right? It's where a muscle attaches the bone called a rotator cuff. So the rotator cuff is a set of four muscles that attach across the shoulder. Uh, by far, it's the most common thing that we address for people with shoulder pain. Uh, it's a really, really great use of the ultrasound. That one's pretty fun to show patients. And I always encourage you too, as we're doing these treatments, you know, take a peek at the screen. You can actually see the needle going straight into these tears, um, especially when we really zoom in, you can get a good uh, sense of what that anatomy looks like. But rotator cuff is uh, definitely a common thing that we treat in the clinic. So do you remember the names of the rotator cuff tendons? Yes, yeah. So you're going to have a couple different movements of the shoulder that are responsible from the rotator cuff. You've got the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the subscapularis, and the teres minor. So it allows you to kind of raise your arm up away from your side and then rotate it like in your back pocket or touch the opposite shoulder. Good, good, good. All right, here is uh, another question. Ah, percutaneous needle tenotomy. Let me see what they say. I have adhesions around the fascia in my shoulder. Adhesions are typically um, collections of blood that become a scar. Would you say that's accurate, Dr. Grove? Yeah, adhesions are just it's basically, uh, you know, the tissue doesn't glide near as good and you get more fibroblasts uh, like on a cellular level. So, yeah, layman term, just scarring that happens. And what usually, what are, what are adhesions typically caused by? Uh, a lot of different things. We see a lot of it with surgery, honestly. Again, when people say we're going to go in and clean out uh, some scar tissue with a surgery, I just scratch my head. I'm like, I don't know what that means because when you do surgery, how's it going to heal? It's going to scar up again, right? So it's, scarring is just a way for the body to try to heal itself. And there are, there are surgeries that are done just to remove adhesions that happen from the bleeding from surgery. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it's So crazy. the patient says, I have adhesions around the fascia in my shoulder. Oh, Doc, looks like we got a live caller here. Ah, well, yeah, let's grab it. Yeah. Take it away. Let's, uh, let's grab Joe calling to us from Long Beach. Joe, good morning, Dr. Thomas Grove, Dr. Mark Darrow. How can we help you? Yes, I um, have a ganglion cyst on my knee. And I went to an orthopedic surgeon who said it wasn't his type of surgery. I went to a second specialist, a sports orthopedic surgeon. He told me that the cause of my cyst was knee was bone on bone arthritis. And to do the surgery would be like malpractice. To fix it, I would have to have a total knee replacement. Ooh. How do you know that you have a cyst? Who told you that? Did you have like an MRI or I, some imaging? No. It sticks out about uh, probably a half an inch on my, uh, just below my knee joint, on the outside of my left leg. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So I've, I, had a, I've had the X-ray and the MRI. Okay. So you do have some imaging. Yeah, so uh, cysts are pretty common that we see these in joint spaces. Uh, you know, it could be a ganglion cyst. It could be something called a Baker's cyst, uh, which can extend down the back of the knee. Um, it could be just a joint effusion, uh, certainly. Um, that's something that we can see very, very easy with ultrasound. And if we needed to, we could, you know, go in and, and drain something like a Baker's cyst. And uh, typically what we want to do is also treat at the same time with regenerative medicine. Uh, Doc, I don't know if you had an experience with this. I worked in a lot of orthopedic clinics before, and they just go in and drain fluid, uh, but it doesn't really provide much long-term relief, and typically that fluid uh, returns you know, within about 48 hours or so. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's common, obviously. Um, what we'd have to find out is if this actually is a ganglion cyst, and the best yeah. way to do that is with the live ultrasound that Dr. Grove uses, and then see if it and communicates. Have, go ahead. I have had it aspirated initially how much how much solution came out how many cc's do you know i don't remember them telling me what it was <clears throat> well was it a bunch of fluid or a drop a bunch of fluid okay it was it's, a real thick viscous clear fluid okay well it may or not have been a ganglion cyst we'd have to see it actually to know what's going on um how would you okay. know that how did, how did you know that it was viscous meaning thick that's what she told me when she was withdrawing it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we'd have to take a look at that. It's one of those kind of things that um, we don't go by other doctors' diagnoses. We go by looking with the ultrasound and then finding out ourselves what it is. Is it a painful thing or just cosmetic problem? It, no, it causes pain because it's uh, so large and it puts pressure on my knee. Okay. Sometimes at the end of a day, I have a hard time walking. Okay, so I've seen a lot of cysts on the side of the knee that are not from a ganglion. You know, a ganglion okay. is tissue that actually produces a certain type of fluid. Most most um, type of cysts that we see are not really what we call cysts. They're just fluid inside of the joint, or if there's a lot of fluid in the joint, it'll push through to the side of the knee. I've seen tons of those. So oh. we have to actually take a look, put our hands on it, put the ultrasound on it, and probably numb it up, put a needle in it, take the fluid out and see what it is. But here's something else we have to be careful of. I'm not sure if they told you you have a bone cyst or not, or why you needed a total knee replacement, because that has nothing to do with the cyst. I don't. I mean, it seems really aggressive to me. Yeah, it's completely unrelated. I, it, it made no sense to me. It's like, you're telling me I need a total knee replacement just to get rid of my cyst. Yeah, it does, doesn't line up. Now, you could have had, you know, maybe some arthritis uh, on your imaging, and maybe that's why they said that. That'd be my, my best guess. But, yeah, that seems yeah, pretty inappropriate he, just based on the information given us. He said it was bone-on-bone bone arthritis. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the bone-on-bone. Bone. Yeah, there yeah. it is. The bone-on-bone bone nonsense. Phrase. Yeah. Bone-on-bone. Yeah. Bone. You know what? Do you know what bone-on-bone bone means, Joe? I have no idea. No, we don't either. I've heard, you talk, <laughs> I've heard you talk about it before. We don't know what it means either because we, we rarely ever see that. I mean, it's just something that... Right. Um, and know, I just... have no pain walking or anything. I mean, yeah, I know I got arthritis. I'm a little stiff, but other than that, I'm walking fine. So here's a good question for you. Why would you want to ever, not that you do, why would anybody want to get a knee replacement when they're not having much pain, when they're going to have a lot of pain after the knee replacement? Yeah, I don't. That's not an easy yeah, surgery. It, just, it doesn't make it does not make sense. Yeah, and again, you got to understand yeah. there's there's complication rates associated with you know total joint replacements, right? You got to expose yeah. yourself to anesthesia when you're opening that skin up, right? That's a risk for things like infection. When you're putting in yeah. that um, arth that uh, the artificial joint, right? Uh, that could come right. loose. That could get infected. Uh, the rehab that's associated rejected. with it is is a time consuming uh, you know part of that recovery process. Um, again, we just we see the bad cases, and it's one of those things that if you don't absolutely need to have that done, uh, we just don't think it should be done. It should be the end of the road in terms of treatment, not the right. first line to, to treat somebody. I agree. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm thinking back, Dr. Grove, when is the last time you sent somebody to surgery? Because I can't remember the last time I did. Uh, not since I've been in Los Angeles. I mean, we get surgical consults, certainly. 
Um, you know, for, that's more like broken bones. We've found a couple of people. I don't know well, if you remember our young, story, yeah, our young yeah. lady got, got yeah. kicked by a horse. That's just, that's yeah. a totally different thing. It's a different story. Yeah. Um, again, I did a ton of orthopedic surgery in my training and, and I saw true, you know, bone on bone arthritis, but those are not people that are still active and walking around and, you know, walking into your clinic, right? It's not something that doesn't exist. It's certainly something that's out there. Um, but it's just a term that is wildly overused. I would say probably for every patient who comes in who says they have bone on bone, there's maybe one out of a thousand that really has it. Oh, I mean, less than that. I mean, I've treated a couple thousand patients just in this last year alone, <laughs> and it's way more than one in yeah. a thousand. There's yeah. the people who say that they have bone on bone. So be do careful. You have any satellite, do you have any satellite office closer to Orange County? No, but it's worth the drive to come see us. I think we're the best right. there is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you you can go so somewhere. The, you know, there's a lot of the people number. that go to a lot of people go to a weekend seminar. A lot of doctors do, and uh, okay. they say they're doing regenerative medicine. I wouldn't trust them a bit. And this is something yeah. I always tell uh, patients because I give out a lot of referrals for you know kidney disease, heart disease, neurological things. And when people say who should I go to, I say go to the guy who does the most. And I right. think that's us. I'm not sure, yeah. but I've people been tell us to you for over a year or so. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, like anything else that you're looking at. If you're looking to have a specialized procedure done or you're looking to have a condition treated, again, if you have access to it, you want to go to the individual that's doing the most, that's seen the most, that has the most amount of experience, that's got the training in it, and not someone who took a you know a weekend course and, and does one every couple of months, right? And that's just that's what kind of you know market is out there um, in terms of the regenerative medicine space, which can be kind of a scary space. Right. So we always right. say, hey, don't be afraid to ask your provider questions. How many of these have you ever seen? How many of these have you done today, sure. this week, this month? And if that answer is zero, you know, take some pause and see if you can't find something that's a better fit for you. Anyway, Joe, yeah, I don't think you have any. The main thing is I don't think you need surgery for what we're talking about. I don't know because right. I haven't examined you. But f for certain, okay. the main the main key is you're getting along fine. Yeah. So is it possible that. Um, the PRP therapy could reduce the fluid in the, that I have currently? All things are possible. I have no idea until we examine you, you and yeah. look with an ultrasound and move you around and really try to figure so out what, what is going on. what number would I call uh, to you? Well, uh, just call the office right now. There's people by the phones there. The phone number to the office is 800 that's 800 300 okay. And then go to the website, www.jointrehab.com, and there's a spot where you can email us. You don't really need to do this because we've already spoken, but uh, we can be emailed. We get emails all day long. And the nicest thing is we got a ton of videos on there, and uh, we actually have all the old radio shows on there and tons of research that we've done. We do research in the office um, of our patients. We have... Um, college students trying to get into medical school who come and do research. We have medical students that come and trying to get a good residency who do research with us. We have uh, a big project uh, in the works right now. It's almost done. We're just getting the figures finished with the statistics on long-term effects of uh, stem cells for knee arthritis. Well, God bless you, Joe. There's good hope ahead for you and your knee. Thank you, Dr. Grove. This is Dr. Mark Darrow signing off. We love you all. And if you want to get a free consult with our staff, call the office, 800-300-9300. Go to the website, watch the videos, www.jointrehab.com. Thank you, Suzette and Alex and the staff. We love you all. God bless you. You've been listening to Living Pain-Free with Dr. Mark Darrow and Dr. Thomas Grove. Now that you've heard Dr. Darrow and Dr. Grove, call their office at 800-300-9300 and speak to one of their staff for free and ask for a copy of Dr. Darrow's book, Stem Cell and Platelet Therapy, Regenerate, Don't Operate. Schedule an appointment by calling 800-300-9300. That's 800-300-9300. Or go online to jointrehab.com. Again, the website is jointrehab.com. Living Pain-Free with Dr. Mark Darrow and Dr. Thomas Grove is heard Saturdays at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and 5 p.m. here on AM870, The Answer. Take the first step toward a pain-free life. Call to schedule an appointment at 800 
800-300-9300. That's 800-300-9300. Live long and pain-free. And thanks for joining us today.